Okay, so we're making some really great progress uh, with the Weisenborn project. We have designed, uh, put together all the, the physical shape. Uh, yesterday we refined all the final details, the curves, uh, back curves, the sound holes here. And uh, just then this morning, I've sprayed everything with four layers of polyester primer. So uh, we couldn't really film inside the spray booth, so you're not going to get to see that part, unfortunately. But uh, you can just imagine me with the spray gun, spraying on four layers of thick white paint. And um, what that does is it just seals in everything, seals in all the fillers and the fiberglass that's underneath, and puts a top skin that, um, that we can now refine further and, uh, and use just to take out any other indents and dips. So uh, I'll just I'll take it off and I'll let you get a good look at it before I start sanding. So uh, as you can see, uh, that really starts to show off the shape and the design. I uh, always like to see it when it's white. You know, it's only when it's one uniform color that you really get to see the contours properly. Everything that we do here with our guitars is generally done on one of these rotisseries. And uh, it's one of the great advantages of working with carbon fiber instruments is the strength of the material allows us to, to always work on these. So it's suspended in between the headstock and the, uh, the tailpiece. And if you did that with a wooden guitar, you would be in jeopardy of cracking the neck joint or body joint or something. So uh, with what we do with composites, it's just so much stronger. It gives me full access, uh, means I can turn it around as I need to. Makes it a lot easier to work with. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to spray a guide coat. So just a little uh, dusting of black. And what that does is it just shows me where all the high spots are. So when I start to sand this, I can see where the high and low spots are. Here. We'll get to see it in a minute. So we'll let that dry off now for a couple of minutes. Uh, it's pretty much dry straight away. But um, that really, really helps whenever I start to sand now. I'll be able to see better what I'm doing. So you can just see how, as I sand into this, it uh, just really highlights the little bits of orange peel, any little defects, sanding marks and scores. So I'm going to get stuck into that and uh, you can follow on. Um, you'll see there's a kind of common thread through everything that I do here. Lots of sanding. So uh, if you work with these materials, you've got to love sanding. So that's the first bit of sanding done. Um, I've taken the heavy sandpaper between uh, 120 grit and some 240 grit. And that just takes all the, the heavy uh, lumps and bumps out of it. So uh, you can see now we're really getting it to be nice and flat. Next step now is more sanding, this time with wet and dry sandpaper. And uh, we'll sand it wet between 600 and then 1200 grit. And then we'll buff it to a nice shine.
Okay, so that's the whole surface now all uh, wet sanded. Although even when I still go over it now, just looking at it, I still see lots of little spores that I'm going to pick out. So even more sanding. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a recess into the back uh, to make a, a back access pit. So when I'm molding this, uh, normally we use the, the side bowl and our other guitars to mold through. Um, because we, we make these all in one piece. It's uh, the top and the back and everything is joined together. So we need some, some way to access it to the inside to work with. For this one, I'm going to uh, make a larger hole here in the back because the, the little small side holes at the top are too small. And we're going to make a recess. So the router, I'm going to make a recess in here and I'm going to use this to mold some resin into the space. And, uh, be our recess for back access. Then that'll get filled over with a update every time. Uh, it also allows us to get into the inside for pickup installation and that kind of stuff. So it's very useful. That's the recess all the way out. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a back plate that I've molded already. Get out of a piece of carbon, and uh, the sides have been just slightly tapered so that it gives us some release for the mold because you don't want vertical, completely vertical sides. What I'm going to do is, uh, is very simply just put some resin down into the bottom of the cavity, and then I'm going to pour that down into it. I'm going to pop that out, that gives it a final shape. So I just find it's the most accurate way to do that and get the, uh, the relief angle. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'm going to continue on, I'm going to cast this in. Dylan's going to go and edit down the footage from today and uh, I'll put that online again. I'll see you tomorrow, this will be finished. And then we're going to start to mold the flange, which is the outside edge of the mold and, uh, and get it ready to start mold making. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow.